Let's study Mishneh Torah, Hilchot Shabbat, Perek Yod Daled. Ezohi Reshut Harabim. The definition of Reshut Harabim. Because it's Yisur De Olaita to be Ma'abir Daled Amot Reshut Harabim, to carry four Amot in Reshut Harabim. And there's um, Yisur De Olaita to carry from Reshut Harabim to Reshut Ayachid or vice versa. I just want to, um, just on the point of carrying Dalit Amot Reshut Rabin, I do want to refer back to Hilchot Shabbat, Perek Yod Bet, Halacha Yod I just want to read that for a moment because there oftentimes there's confusion on that, on that law. Ho'il ve'yash lo le'adam le'taltel b'chol ha'mu'ba she'hu arba amot al arba amot. So, granted that a person is allowed to carry four amot in Reshut Rabin, then when we say you can carry four amot in the shut rabim, let's say for example you're standing in uh, in point A. So you can be deemed to be standing in the middle of a square, right? For example, so if you're in the middle of a square, and the square is four by four, each one of the sides of the square is four amot by four amot, or two yards by two yards, as it uh, closely close approximation. So now, if you think about it as a square, you understand that the diagonal of a square is um, longer than the sides of the square, right? Um, based upon the famous uh, Pythagorean theorem. Um, so that means that actually you can carry a little more than for a in a straight line, right? So it all depends how you measure your position at any given time. So, Nimsa metaltel be orech alachsono shel merubaze hamesh amot mushlosha humshe ama. So, therefore, actually, if you look at yourself, look at yourself as if you're in the middle of a square, you can carry along the line of the diagonal, and that comes out to five amot and two fifths. So, that would be. Um, 5.4 amot, <clears throat> 5.4 amot, you can carry five, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, um, um, uh, five and three-fifths, so that would be 5.6 amot, a little more than five and a half amot. And therefore, technically, in order to be liable <clears throat> for punishment, you have to carry past the five amot and three fifths amot. So, if you carried exactly five amot and three fifths amot, 5.6 amot, you didn't make any sort of right yet, right? Okay. The Chonok of Shavanu Tehilat Alba Sof Alba, Wam Abir Alba Mot Hagyavu Mitehilat Alaf Sonja Alba Mot and so forth. So whenever we say that um, you're not allowed to carry for a mot, you can measure it by the diagonal. And therefore, if you carried less than the measure of the diagonal, in 5.6 amot, then you're fine. 5.6 amot, that would be two and a half yards. Um, two and a half, that's 2.5, about 2.8 yards. Nimsa kan shalosh midot. So to be precise, when we're talking about carrying in the shoot out of him, there are three measurements. So, you lift up a, an object in the Rishwut Rabim and you carry it and you put it in the Rishwut Rabim in another place, another location. If the distance between the two locations is 
up to for a month, nothing wrong with that. It's mutal. You can do that. If, on the other hand, you carried it more than for a month, but not greater than, um, no, I'm sorry, but less than 5.6 a month, less than, I want to correct what I said before, before I said you can carry up to, and it sounded like you can carry 5.6 a month. It's up to, but not including 5.6 a month, meaning a little less than 5.6 a month. That's patur, it's patur avalasur. So interesting, Rambam says, to carry along the diagonal is patur avalasur, right? But I said earlier, about five minutes ago, that one can carry along the diagonal, that's the Rabbana, the Oraita. But Chachamim asru to carry along the diagonal and only allow you to carry the four amot. So if you carry between four amot, um, I'm sorry, more than four amot, up to 5.6 amot, but not including 5.6 amot, right? Patur, Yisur de Rabbanan. Haya benem chamesh amot v'shashach hum she'ama v'shaveh, that is a chaya, but if you actually carry the full distance, 5.6 amot exactly, or greater than 5.6 amot, then you're chaya. Interesting, at this point, the Shulchan Aruch is cholek. On this point, the, the Shulchan Aruch is, is um, cholek. Um, according to the Shulchan Aruch, you're actually allowed to carry up to 5.6 amot. Not 5.6 amot, up to 5.6 amot. So, Mahlok et is Mahmir. And the mom says, then to summarize, if you carry if you carry for a month, less than for a month, it's muta. For a month or less. For a month or less, it's muta. According to Alam. Shohana Ruch agrees with that. If you carry greater than for a month and up to 5.6 a month, but not, you didn't reach 5.6 a month. According to Alabam, that's Patur Avalasur. According to the Shukhan Ruch, it's Mutar. If you carry 5.6 a month, it's Hayyam De Oraita. So now let's go back to uh, the definition of Rishul Tarabim, Perik Yodali Dalacha Alif. According to Rambam, deserts. Um, forests. Marketplaces. Like the Shuk. Or roads that lead to a marketplace, or that lead to a forest, or that lead to a desert. When do we say that a road is considered a it has to be a minimum of 16, 16 a mot wide, right? Has to be a minimum of 60. Okay, sorry for the glitch there. So um, we're talking about the Shutar Abim, and we said that Midbarot and uh, deserts and forests and marketplaces, marketplaces like um, the Shuk Mahane Yehuda, Udrachim and Fulashim, and the roads leading to these um, places. But it's on condition that the road is at least 16 amot wide. That was a condition. And there should be no roof over the Rishut Habim. Okay? 
um, now. I just want to note that um, Harabam says Midbarot Vi'arim or Rishut Harabim, just to prevent com confusion. I'm saying this so people get confused. Yes, the Shulchan Aruch disagrees and says that Midbarot and Ya'arim or Ya'arot are actually um, Karmelit. Okay, just wanted to get, if you see that, not to get confused, because sometimes the memory plays tricks and you get confused, you don't remember what Dalachai said. Remember, Hanabam says that the Rishut Arabim includes deserts and forests, whereas Shulchan Aruch says, no, um, deserts and forests are Karmelit. And again, 16 Amot, that's the minimum uh, width of the Rishut Rabim. Um, the Shulchan Aruch brings the Shita of Harambam, 16 Amot being the minimum width, and constituting the Rishut Rabim, it brings that as a Setam. Then he brings the Yesh Omrim, the famous uh, um, uh, position that says, no, you have to have 600,000 people. And without 600,000 people, you don't have a Rishut Arabim. I, I follow the Shulchan Aruch, the Setam, and also Arambam, um, because it doesn't make sense to me. According to the explanation that in 600,000 people, Lo Rishut Arabim Me'olam, since Dora uh, Midbar, there never was ever a Rishut Arabim in human history. I mean, you know, it could be that, you know, somewhere. But it just it doesn't um, doesn't make sense to me. All right. The Ezra Shut and Yahid Tel Gaboa Asarate Fahim, the Rahab al Bati Fahim al Bati Fahim. The Shut al Abim has a minimum measurement, for example, a mound in the Rishut al Abim, which is at least 10 tefahim high and four by four wide. Those are the minimum measurements. If the measurement is greater than that, then it's still rishut yachid. Or it could be instead of a mound, it could be a, a ditch. Again, if the ditch is at least 10 tefahim deep and at least four by four wide, four tefahim by four tefahim wide, it's rishut yachid. Also, it could be a enclosure, enclosure with, which has four sides. And the, again, the minimum height has to be 10 to fachim. Minimum width and length has to be four by four to fachim. But this enclosure doesn't have to be four by four, it could be several miles several kilometers wide, several kilometers long. For example, a ranch in Texas, you have many of these ranches in Texas, which are huge, right? You have walls running down on both sides. Assuming you know, we're not dealing now with the, what a wall is and what constitutes a wall. I'm looking at this in a very general uh, sense. And it has to be it has to be that the walls were put there for residential purposes. So maybe uh, a private estate would be a better uh, example. You have a private estate and the private estate is acres upon acres upon acres and there's a wall enclosing the estate. That would be the Shutayachid because it's Mukaf Ledira. A ranch is not always Mukaf Ledira. A ranch is Mukaf for other purposes. And then he brings, Kevon Medina HaMukefet Choma Shedal Toteha Nin Alot Balad. For example, cities. In antiquity, cities had walls around them. And if the cities, Walls are locked at night, like a gated community. Yeah, I, I, I understand gated communities where you have a wall around the community, and it's locked at night. You could also have the dinam mavoi. Mavoi is um, it's a like an alleyway which has a dead end. So imagine like an alleyway in the in Jerusalem or the old city where you have like a, a road or something and there's walls on both sides, right? And then it gets to a dead end. That's called a mavoi. It's three sides. It's not four sides. It is it's four sides. A mavoi is three sides. So mavoi also um, is a 
But in the case of the Mavoi, you have to put a lehi or a kola. Lehi is a uh, vertical pole, kola is a uh, horizontal pole at the um, entrance to the Mavoi. We believe that that's later on. We can study that. But he doesn't bring kola here. He brings lehi, mechila. He just doesn't bring the wall of kola. He just brings lehi. Lehi, the vertical pole. Bechen chaser ledir vesoha. Also a chaser, a chaser is a public courtyard, so they would have, it's a kind of a gated community actually, that's what a chaser is. You have houses, and then you have a square enclosure around the houses, and then you have a public square. Also, everything is enclosed within four walls, that's a chaser, gated community. Vedir Vesoha, different types of barns. Vedir and Sohar are barns. Shoke full of In the case of the barn or ranch, it has to be that the walls were put around for residential purposes. And again, we'll deal with that with the later. These are all considered at a Right. Okay, that's it for today.